Hello and welcome to another week of the Punter's Guide and just the two of us this week, myself and Joel, as we tackle racing from both Newbury um, and Newcastle. But before we do, let's touch on last week with um, the, the dramas of non-runners at Ascot um, and, and the dramas of racing um, at Betfair with the Betfair Chase. Joel, it, it was quite a, a bizarre weekend, I called it. Yeah, it was bizarre. I think you got the short straw because I was at Haydock, so I had a phenomenal time. I got to hang out with uh, Alex Ferguson afterwards and have a glass of red wine. It was great. You were down there. You had your uh, your treble on and what have you. And none of the big guns ran for you. So I, I yeah. felt for you, but Haydock was the place to be. It was a party up north at the weekend. Some brilliant racing as well. But the sad thing about it was uh, Aplutar. I, I said to you beforehand, uh, I watched the race standing behind Henry de Bromhead and after three fences, yeah, he's not going, he's not going. And in my head, it's quite good that they've not found anything. It's just it's just one of them things, isn't it? But I still think 12 to 1 now for the Gold Cup. I'm wading back in now. Yeah, well, I saw uh, someone tweet a photo of Ed saying, I was, don't worry, all's good. I was just, just giving you 12s for the Gold Cup, which I quite liked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think I, I, I'd, uh, I had a tenner on at uh, six to one for Ablutar to win at Haydock, and then go on to win the Gold Cup, which is out the window now. But yeah, we just loaded back up. I, 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 you know, it's it's one of those things. As they all say, I saw Will Kennedy there, one of my old mates, uh, jockey, and he, he said they're not machines. I'm like, I know, I know the old racing cliche. But um, yeah, after three, you knew your fate. I think after after that. But fair play to um, Protector Rat. Um, you know, I couldn't believe the price on that. I would never have fancied that horse. And seventeen to two or something went off, and um, f- phenomenal, great stuff. Well done, the comedy brothers. It was, yeah. Um, talking to non-runners this point, but we do get to see two of those this weekend, Constitution Hill, Long Press. Um, so it does look like a cracking weekend race. And we'll get to those two at Newcastle in a minute, but we're going to start with the 120 on Saturday at Newbury, the Sir Peter O'Sullivan Memorial Handicap Chase. Um, Cap Course, a winner of this twice, uh, has raced in it three times, actually. This will be his fourth go at it. He doesn't seem to do a whole lot else apart from go for this race. Um, tops the market, Killer Kane. For Joe Tizard, Demachine, Mr. Coffee for Nicky Henderson. He likes to have winners at this Newbury weekend. Um, who do you fancy, Joe? Well, first off, I think I'm going for uh, Demachine for Kerry Lee. Uh, one of my favourite horses last year. Decent fifth in the Labrooks Trophy at this meeting last year. Uh, Richard Patrick gave me far too much to do, in my opinion. Never ridden a horse in my life. Um, but, you know. Uh, ridden 25,000 from me, uh, me armchair. Making smooth headwear was so far back. Uh, Johnny Burt won him last time in May at Utoxeter. Adam Wedge takes over. Uh, Kerry Lee's coming to a little bit of form. Uh, I like her as a trainer. 25% at the minute. It's a small sample, three from 12, but the machine for me. And just one, it's 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 one to put in the tracker. Uh, senior citizen goes again for Alan King and uh, Adrian Heskin. Uh, Grand Sefton last, um, it was early this month, wasn't Entry. Um, if you look at the racing post comments, no, normally write at least at least twenty five words. It just says always towards rear. That's the entire thing you get on there. Uh, it needs dropping a few pounds. It's twenty to one. Um, just keep that in mind. It's going for something. Probably needs to be dropped another six or ten pounds. Uh, senior sitting is twenty to one. It's drifted all this week. But the machine for me. What are you thinking yourself? The machine for you. I'm going to go for Cap de Nor, Christian Williams. He was he was quite keen about this horse um, for the the Badgers, was it? Wing Canton, and he couldn't understand why it was on the drift that day. It's been dropped two pounds for that race, and Ellis now takes a further seven off. Jack Road cap last time. So effectively nine pounds better off. Christian was really happy with him before the race. He came third, which is decent enough. And I can't understand why he's 10 to one. He's a pretty consistent horse. I think he's got to go at least in the places. I think we'll give you a good run for your money um, at nearer a double digit price. So cap de Nord for me. And maybe another to note would be Nicky Henderson's Mr. Coffee. Um, second in the Silly Isles, second in the Kim Muir, I think at Cheltenham. They're better races than this. And off a 140, might have a chance. He's, he's raced around here a few times as well, so he knows Newbury. Um, so two goes would be Mr. Coffee. But but Captain North stands out as one that's overpriced for me, definitely, in the 120. Um, next up, we'll stay at Newbury. The 155. Oh, we've got some hype horses in here. Walking on air. Um, 
there was a lot of chat about walking on air early last season. Oh yeah, we we never got to see it. Um, he didn't go to Cheltenham. He went to Aintree. Was pulled up, and something was amiss there. And we don't really know where to place him now. West uh, Balboa, another one that has the potential to be miles better than a 127 horse. And then you've got some more exposed ones with Perkin Rose, Lord Battersley, Porticello. Um, are you with the the unexposed horses? Those two at the top, John. No, I'm not. I'm with Peking Rose in uh, in this in this race for uh, Paddy and Fergal. Uh, what a short head last month at Aintree. Uh, badly idled on the run in. It was it was just being really lazy. Brian Hughes was behind um, on uh, a different kind. It was all action. I, I think the winner would have found more. Uh, does jump slightly right is what I've put in my notes here. Uh, but bolted up by eleven lengths at Newbury last December. Um, so Peking Rose is quite a strong one for me um, this weekend, 155 at Newbury. Uh, the eye catcher, again, it's one of those ones that I think everybody's on. Um, I always say Is Isabel Williams is genuinely one of my favourite jockeys because she always looks like she's on a non-trier. Um, but I think on current mood, she may have been. It's a massive eye catcher uh, for Evan Williams. Uh, Foss last last month, it was a very, very easy ride. Very easy ride. Came third. Um, and she's a lot better than that. Um, I think I think current mood for me uh, would be the one each way, and the money has come, 25s into 10s. So just have a look for that one. But the main bet for me, Peak and Rose in the 155 at Newbury. Yeah, Evan Williams, another trainer that likes to have a few winners at this meeting. Um, I'm in the other camp. I, I, to be honest, I'd agree off of form, off of what we know, but uh, Fergal's horse would probably be the one for me. Um, but I like to believe the hype, Joel. I like to believe the hype yeah. of these these at the top two of the market and think they'll be way beyond uh, there, or they could be, you know, they could be 140, 150 horses. And I just think walking on air has probably been a tricky horse to train. Um, really impressive. Didn't go to Cheltenham. I think they said they ran green um, at Aintree and didn't jump well. So I think he's taken a little bit more time than they'd like. And maybe that's why we haven't heard as much about him because they don't want to talk too highly of a horse that is tricky and is difficult to get the track but I do think the ability is there um, so I'm of the opinion that in hindsight <laughs> we we hope it could look a great price uh, but we'll find out after the race but yeah I, I, I'd be uh, willing to believe the hype of walking on air from last year uh, in the 155 at Newbury we'll stay at Newbury no we won't we'll, we'll shift over how could we forget the 210 at Newcastle the fighting fifth that comes first um, before more action at Newbury we are pretty certain Constitution Hill is going to run. Um, I think somebody told me all the Northern trainers are, are going mad because they're just watering the track, whatever, to get Constitution Hill to run. So there's no regard for, for anyone <laughs> yeah. else. They just hey, man, I've got me water. I've got me water in Can down here, Lake. I've got Alan Deck and Spooky from Biker Grove and Jimmy Neal and, uh, and who else have I got? Alan Shearer with a watering can just making sure that Constitution Hill comes really out of weekend. Exactly that. We they, they don't go about anything else. Just get the ground right so the Constitution Hill turns up. And if he does turn up, which you think he will, against Epiton, not so sleepy, Tommy's Oscar, does he go and win like we expect him to, John? Well, I, I was driving down this morning about uh, quarter past 10 and uh, they were talking about this in Talk Sport. They, they spoke for 20 minutes about this race. C can we speak about it for 10 seconds? Uh, <laughs> Constitution Hill goes and wins. Even money for champion hurdle. Hasn't seen a race course this year. Takes on Honeysuckle at, uh, uh, at Cheltenham. I still think Honeysuckle's a great price. Uh, mm -hmm. Top price, five to one for the champion hurdle. I'm beating there. Um, Constitution Hill, you know, you want to see the good horses win. Um, Nicky's has to run them both together here. Uh, not so sleepy, ain't got a chance. Tommy's Oscar ain't got a chance. Uh, Void of Rev hasn't got a chance. Uh, I think Constitution Hill wins as hard-held as you like, as I want to see. And I think uh, Epitant will just 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 finish to never close in second, 25 lengths off. And I, I think we put a line under it. Uh, it then goes probably 8 to 11 for the champion hurdle. <laughs> but you want to see the good horses. You want to see the good horses. I agree. I, I don't think we need to talk too much about it. Like you said, Constitution Hill goes and wins Epiton in second. If there was any sort of bet, you might want to play them the forecast. But uh, there's not much value to be had from a punting perspective. It is just enjoy Constitution Hill. It's got to be one of the most exciting jumps horses yeah. in training right now. Um, so, yeah, job done. Nothing gets close. As you said, hard held, goes and wins. Um, that will be the fighting fifth, hopefully, at 2.10. Um at Newcastle on Saturday as we skip back to Newbury 
we nearly hit their big race of the day. But first, we have the 230 Register Jerry Field and Premier Handicap, uh, a class one. There's plenty of good handicaps across the weekend at Newbury. First Street, Picar, Teddy Blue, Theatre Glory. That's two from Nicky in there. Um, do you think it does go? to the Henderson team or Skelton runs to Paul Nichols has got a runner in here. Who'd you like, Joel? Just, I mean, I, I've made so many notes about this, this race and um, I, it's, it's, again, it's one of those ones where you just go, where's it going? I think it's going to a big trainer, which is, which is the biggest thing of the world ever. Um, the two that got it down to is really boring. Uh, the Henderson pair. Uh, yeah. um, Theatre Glory. Theatre Glory, Nathan Brennan claiming seven. Oh, who's this lad? He's won the horse before. He's a decent jock. Um, and, and first straight, I think the state man form is a standout form. Um, I think this will be last time in handicaps. Up to Grady Company next time. Um, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't split the pair, but I think it goes to first straight or Theatre Glory, which is really boring. Um, like I say, the kid on the Theatre Glory is, is, is a good job. One up before and first street, the state man form is outstanding. He is. I think Nathan Brennan makes a difference for me. Seven pounds um, goes off a one three seven, and he didn't ride last time out when winning at Cheltenham. Uh, James Byron rode that day, but like you said, he has rode him before at Calso and won on him. It's nice to see a horse with three strikes next to his name going up in the ratings, and then a claimer claiming seven jumping back on. Um, I think Theatre Glory has got a great chance. And yeah, this one likely goes to Nicky Henderson. Uh, we'll stay at Newbury uh, for the 3.05. The Coral Gold Cup handicap chase, the big one um, of the weekend, the big handicap of the weekend at Newbury. You've got Karak Rambler, three under three, five. Oscar Elite, Remastered, was travelling well in this race last year when falling. Bustleton, the Irish Raider. Um, there's all sorts. Uh, our power for our mate Sam Thomas, who we've been back in. How do you pick one out of here, Joel, or do you pick two or three? Uh, uh, I, I, I I looked through it all, and uh, I thought I'd take a, the, the pin land on Bustleton um, at 10 to 1 for Joseph O'Brien and JJ. Uh, good win the Kerry National in September at uh, Listowel. Uh, there was a faller in that, in that race. Um, it would have come first to second, but well clear the rest. Uh, that second at Galway was decent. Before that, finishing uh, well on the flat. Um, so, so I think that'd be my main bet in this race, uh, Bustleton. Uh, um, lost in translation. Now, before you uh, end the call now, um, I, 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 this is a horse that I can never get right. I can never get right. And it must be 17 now. Um, but Joe Tezard has put his, his, his kid on. Uh, Freddie claiming the seven. And I heard him on uh, a TV show this week uh, saying that Lost in Translation uh, with Freddie has been at the local point-to-point -point track and he's been absolutely flying uh, and said there are far worse 33-to-1 shots um, for a bit of fun. It gave Freddie a buzz. Uh, and it's not just to give him a buzz. It, it's 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 to, you know, make the horse win. That's, that's the aim of the game uh, at the tender age of 97. Um, so I think, look, for me, I'll watch it uh, with Bustleton, uh, Bustleton with a 10 to 1 shot. And and, and do you know what? For, for £2.50 each way, 33s, lost in translation. I hope it gives the kid a good buzz. And, um, you know, before retirement, let's let's get that sort of pot in there. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be complete. Like I said, there's, there's worst uh, 33 to 1 shots in lost in translation, that's for sure. Bustleton, I'd have to agree. That's, that's probably the horse that, you know, you've got plenty of gold cup winners have come out of this race and Bustleton is probably the horse yeah. that catches your eye as the one that could be of that caliber um the only the only question mark if you want for trends is a five-year-old's never won this race so he does have to buck that yeah. trend. um but um he's yeah, very experienced uh, for the world isn't he Frankie, 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 exactly what I wrote here. A five-year-old has never won this race. I said that to, a friend said that to me yesterday when we were going through it. And I went, what do you think? And he went, five-year-old's never won that race, zip. And I said, <laughs> hey, I said, but Saudi Arabia have never beaten Argentina. <laughs> there we go. And, 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 he's a very experienced five-year-old. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's 12 times over over the uh, the obstacles, yeah. isn't it? So, so, you know, it's, it's not like he's just had a couple of little pops around. Exactly. Uh, so I, I hate, I, sometimes I love stats if I get them right. Otherwise, if the stats are you know, against you, I'll get rid of them.
Yeah, I mean, if there's one man to do it, Joseph Brown, he knows what he's doing, doesn't he? And he doesn't often bring horses over without a decent chance. Buston, I'd have to agree, looks like could be uh, the potential class act in here. Jericho Rock, I think off that ultimate form, I mean, there's Oscar Elite in here, there's Corrett Rambler, our power, there's about four or five in here that came, that raced against each other at Cheltenham in the ultimate. Um, Corrett Rambler's gone up seven pounds off if you're comparing to the the race at Cheltenham. Jericho Rock, <clears throat> only up a pound from that race at the Ultima and was only two lengths behind Korak Rambler. Um, Tom Scudamore, I think, fancies his chances. He got the choice of Jericho Rock or Remastered. And I think Jericho Rock's definitely going to give you a run for your money. Um, and then I would, if I was going to play three against the field, Bustleton, Jericho Rock, and you know what? Our power also racing that Ultima has won Ascot since. Um, I think still has come yeah. up with a great chance. He's, he's, he's jumping well. He stays. He's a proper three-mile chaser. He's tough, and he will uh, once again give you a run for your money. Um, so three from me against the field. But I think we're in agreement, aren't we? Buston could be the class act. Yeah. Uh, or Saturday Sam. Saturday Sam Thomas. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sam Thomas, Saturday Sam Thomas. We like that. Mr. Okay, Davis. That. Got <laughs> more, um, to look at on the Saturday. We'll head back to Newcastle for their last race of the day, the 325, and we get to see another. Newcastle's basically nicked to the Ascot, my Ascot treble. Um, I, I will be in the same boat, although we don't have Edward Stone. We have Constitution Hill. We have Long Presse. Um, they'll be my two shorties that we didn't see Ascot that I think go and win at Newcastle. Do you agree? No. You don't? Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't. Um, into Overdrive, uh, five to one for the Mark Walford team. Um, I said before that horses with Mark Walford, and it's a name that people, you know, go, oh, okay. So if this is Henderson, I think we got two to one the field, uh, two to one joint favourites because it's Mark Walford. And who is he? He's a little dude from you know outside York or whatever. <laughs> um, you know, top, top guy. You know, last horse I had with him won six times, and you're getting twenty to one a price. If you were, the, you know, Henderson Nichols, you're getting six to. Um, won the last four at Carlisle, Perth, Hexham. That good win at Weatherby last time. Creeping up the ratings. Um, look, he's not got the class of Lahon Press, but this is first time out, and the the the, the prep's been stuttered. It's are you going to ask Scott? He doesn't know where he's going. His head's going to be screwed. Um, carrying twelve stone and uh, into overdrive at five to one, ten stone two. You could have that awful, awful muggy bet of you know each way at five to one. But when you see a horse in form at whatever level. I think what was the what was the horse years ago owned um, by the cow farmer, the uh, uh the uh, the ball um hunt ball that was just going go, going through the the ratings and won at Cheltenham as well. Just keep backing them until they lose. Uh into overdrive for me. I th I, th I think it's a fun play bet this weekend. Yeah, I want to see Lahm Press uh you know fly because I want to see the good horses do that. But you know for a for a for a trainer down the road from me um into overdrive last four one five to one yeah, go for it. You're staying low. I like it. I'm of the opinion that Lampresse won't be at his best, but he's still good enough. He is class, top, top class. Last oh, race yeah. we're going to look at, um, the 340, so the closer at Newbury on the Saturday. Um, top of the market, Amarillo Sky for the team Tizard, who I I, I know a massive fan of this horse, or fancy this horse's chances to come here and win. Um so I won't go much further than that down the car to find my selection. Um, but we've got in there only money, Bundaran, uh, Eclair, Dene, Monsieur Lecoq, if you're talking French. You're going to be speaking French come the last race on Saturday, Joe? A few glasses I think of wine. Be, yeah, I think it will be. Have a, vape in one hand, a can in the other. Come on, Lecoq. Uh, <laughs> Monsieur Lecoq in, in the last for me. Uh, when did make call at Ascot last time? Uh, it was last month. It was a soft fall at the second. Uh, it's one off one three eight. I think it's about one thirty now off the top of my head. Uh, Jane Williams hasn't had a great time since the unfortunate accident with Chester. Her son is a good little jock. Uh, she's coming back into a little bit of form. She's a uh, 25% strike rate. It's only a small sample. I think it's four from uh, 16 at the minute. Um, but to get your uh, weekend rounded off, 3.40 at Newbury, all about the cock, Monsieur Lecoq. <laughs> there we are. That wraps uh, Saturday's racing. A good mix of top class handicaps and then seeing some of those exciting horses, Constitution Hill, Long Presse. Let's um let's finish Joel with a best bet of the Saturday races that we've both looked at. I'll let you start. 
Oh, cheers. Well, mate, I've got pages and pages and pages and pages and pages. And, and I'll, I'll let you know, it's not one of those weird ones. At, at, you know, um, you know what? My, my nap's going to be a brave one then. Um, on. Just because in hindsight, this could look a massive price. So you're a hero if you nap it. And if you don't, well, we'll just forget about it. But <laughs> walking on air at the price I'm seeing right now, if he is anything... What, what price? About four to one you get. That go that could go and win by ten lengths. Okay, <laughs> I mean, it might not, but if I nap it, happens, I mean, <laughs> by ten lengths of four to one. It just, look, I mean, I I think the reason this horse hasn't we haven't seen enough of him and he hasn't been talked up as much as he is is because he's obviously tricky to get to a racetrack and to get him sound and to get him jumping. But the ability is there, and if we see the ability and it comes together on Saturday, then four to one is absolutely huge. So walking on air for me. Um, to defy whatever you're about to say. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going at least five times that price. I'm going to the 340 Newbury. It's all about uh, Shearer and Paddle Your Own Canoe. This horse has been my tracker for two years. We've had one win from this horse since I put it in the tracker at nine to one on at Chepstow. Uh, it's for Fergal and Liam Harrison. Ask a honeybee. Uh, good third at Aintree last month, uh, 22 to one. It's down to one, two, five now, 20 to one. There's a big day coming. The big days are coming. Let's hope it's this weekend. So uh, each way, ask a honeybee in the 340 at Newbury. Uh, we don't want Shearer to uh, come down. We don't want Paddle Your Own's new canoe to come down. Oh, by the way, the two people at um, Haydock I met last weekend uh, as I was going in, one guy was the dad of the the, the lad who leads up Aplutar and said, oh, it's a goddamn certainty. 30, 40, 50 lengths, right? And the other guy I met was uh, somebody who um, who talked about uh, Paddle Your Own Canoe has been working with uh, Nube Negra and getting him off the bridle. So, um, <laughs> you, believe? you know, Paddle Your Own Canoe <laughs> flies up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah look, I believe everything. Uh, ask a honeybee, 340 new brie, each way about uh, 20, 20 to 1, something like that. I agree. Um, that is on the Friday. So maybe when people are watching this, they, they might have already won, but let's hope that they, they hear this before and they can all back Ask a Honeybee because I do agree that's got to be a great bet. Um, that is Saturday's action covered. Thanks very much, Joel. Uh, hopefully we found some winners. Um, and as we said, if not come Saturday, then as Joel has mentioned, Monsieur Lecoq, you'll be drinking red wine and <laughs> backing winners in the last. Um, stick with us for, for all of the racing action this week. And we'll be back next week, of course, probably as a trio. And if you do have a bet, then gamble responsibly. <laughs>